Hello and welcome to Triage, Rapid Legal Lessons for Busy Healthcare Professionals, a podcast created and produced by K&L Gates. Each episode is designed to highlight important developments in health law and analyze the impact on our clients and friends of the firm. We hope you enjoy this podcast. Hello, and thank you for listening to Triage, Rapid Legal Lessons for Busy Healthcare Professionals. My name is Gabe Scott, and I'm an associate in the firm's Research Triangle Park, North Carolina office. I'm joined today by my colleagues, Darlene Davis, a partner also in the Research Triangle Park office, and Andy Ruskin, a partner in the firm's Washington, D.C. office. Today, we'll be talking about the recent developments in regard to Medicare reimbursement under the hospital outpatient prospective payment system for drugs purchased under the 340B drug pricing program. So first, I'm going to turn it over to Andy to discuss the recent decision in American Hospital Association versus Azar, which was issued by the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit on July 31st. Hey, thanks, Gabe. Uh, And hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to discuss even more 340B developments with you all. Who'd have thought that we'd have so many developments all back to back? As many of you likely know, there was an about face at the D.C. Circuit on July 31st regarding payment for Part B drugs administered in the hospital outpatient department when purchased under the 340B program. Beginning in 2018, as some of you may already know, CMS started paying uh, 340B covered entities 28.5% less than other hospitals for drugs purchased under the 340B program when used for hospital outpatients. CMS relied on a a little-used statutory authority to make adjustments, quote-unquote, to drug pricing as the basis for this unprecedented measure. The district court, when looking at what CMS had done, determined that what CMS did was anything but a, quote-unquote, adjustment, and instead stated that CMS would need to obtain survey data uh, indicating what acquisition costs for these drugs actually were, which would actually have been in accordance with the statute before it could engage in the sweeping changes promulgated in, in that rulemaking. The D.C. Circuit, however, applied a very different standard. It stated that for the hospitals to have prevailed in this litigation, they would need to show that, and this is a quote, Congress unambiguously barred HHS from taking the action that they did. That's right. So the the new standard is, is that Congress has to unambiguously bar CMS from doing something before CMS will be told it cannot do it. Although some of us would would call the court's interpretation of the statute itself quite strained, uh, and they did look at all of the relevant provisions pertaining to whether or not CMS could make this uh, particular change in in payment policy. We nevertheless must recognize that the court did not find that the statute absolutely foreclosed HHS's reading and therefore upheld the interpretation. This is, of course, uh, for, for many of us, a very unsatisfactory decision, especially for for those providers who are counting on, on the 340B program savings, especially now, to fund their mission of treating indigent patients and otherwise. However, all is not lost just yet. HA can either appeal the decision to the Supreme Court, they can seek a rehearing to the same court, that is, or they can collaterally challenge it in another jurisdiction. In the meantime, for all the hospitals that have also individually appealed CMS's policy, they should think carefully before withdrawing their appeals in light of the options that are still available to HA. But the bad news doesn't end there. Darlene, why don't you go ahead and address how the other shoe has dropped as well? Thanks, Andy. CMS released in pre-publication form the Hospital Outpatient Prospective Payment System proposed rule for calendar year 2021 on August 4th, and it's scheduled to be published in the Federal Register on August 12th. In the proposed rule, CMS proposes two alternative payment methodologies for separately payable drugs acquired under the 340B program in calendar year 2021 and subsequent years. The first alternative is average sales price, or ASP, minus 34.7%, plus an add-on of 6% of the product's ASP, for a net payment rate of ASP minus 28.7%. As an aside, the rule does also describe proposed reimbursement for biosimilars, drugs that are priced using average wholesale price or wholesale acquisition cost that are acquired through the 340B program. But for purposes of this discussion, we'll focus on drugs priced using ASP. 
in the first alternative, CMS indicates it is basing this rate on the results of the hospital acquisition cost. In regard to the first alternative, CMS indicates it is basing this rate on the results of the hospital acquisition cost survey for 340B acquired specified covered outpatient drugs. Hospitals will recall that as a result of CMS's loss in the AHA versus Azar litigation at the district court level that Andy mentioned, CMS conducted a 340B hospital survey to collect 340B drug acquisition cost data for the fourth quarter of calendar year 2018 and the first quarter of calendar year 2019. The survey was open from April 24th, 2020 to May 15th, 2020. So in the proposed rule, CMS describes the survey methodology and its view as to how it's permitted to pay 340B hospitals under a different methodology, with that methodology being in reliance on survey data, as opposed to how it will pay non-340B hospitals, which will generally continue to receive ASP plus 6%. CMS also describes in the proposed rule the methodology it used to calculate the ASP reduction for 340B hospitals. And while a recitation of the various calculations CMS considered is beyond the scope of our discussion, um, CMS ended up deciding to use the geometric mean of the survey data with certain adjustments, such as excluding penny pricing and excluding certain outliers as they describe in the proposed rule. So in the end, based on CMS's calculations, CMS selected the payment rate of ASP minus 34.7% and then propose to adjust the rate further by including an add-on payment of 6% of the product's ASP. And again, the net result of that payment rate for their first alternative is ASP minus 28.7%. So again, a significant reduction off the historical rate, but also off the current rate of ASP minus 22.5%. However, in light of the D.C. Circuit Court's decision, which Andy described, the second alternative CMS proposes is a continuation of the current payment rate of ASP minus 22.5% for 340B acquired drugs. And as a reminder, of course, critical access hospitals and hospitals that are located in Maryland that are paid under Maryland's all-payer or total cost of care model are excluded from the rates since they're not paid under the outpatient prospective payment system. And further, CMS is proposing to continue its existing exemption for rural sole community hospitals, separately certified children's hospitals, and PPS-exempt cancer hospitals. Comments on this and other proposals in the proposed rule are due no later than 5 p.m. on October 5th, 2020. Thanks, Darlene and Andy, for these insights. And thanks to our listeners for your interest in this triage episode on the recent reimbursement developments regarding drugs purchased under the 340B program. If you have any topics that you would like to see discussed via triage, you can click on the Contact Us link located at the top of the triage website, or you can email us. We would love to hear from you. We at KNL Gates will continue to monitor changes to Medicare payment policy and will provide ongoing updates. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thanks again. Thanks again for listening to Triage, rapid legal lessons for busy healthcare professionals. New episodes are available for download through iTunes, Google Play, and other podcast applications. By subscribing to Triage, you will receive timely notifications of each new episode. Also, if you have any topics that you would like to hear discussed on Triage, please don't hesitate to email triagesupport at klgates.com. We would love to hear from you.